Welcome to my YouTube channel where we demonstrate and discuss everything related to theatrical and entertainment production crafts. Please subscribe to get the latest updates, posts, and demonstrations. While I will primarily be focusing on safety and reviewing safety operating procedures and comprehensive training of tools and machinery, I'll also demonstrate and discuss practical applications like flat and platform construction, scene painting techniques, and more. If you'd like to see something specific demonstrated or discussed, please let me know in the comments. Once again, please subscribe and power up the alert bell to get the most up-to-date notifications about new content. This is our demonstration for coiling electrical cable. We're going to do some full-size 12 gauge stage pin cable, and we're going to use some of your more common 14 and 16 gauge extension cords, gauge and amperage and all of that. That's different electrician's lesson. For now, we're just coiling cable, but the thicker 12 gauge stage pin cable, it does have the bigger jacket on it, so it's going to coil in a very restricted way. We have a cable here that's a mess. Of course, the first thing you want to do is always clean off anything that's on the cable. If there's a piece of gaff tape or other stuff on there, get rid of that. Do leave the color coatings on them and uh, do leave the tie line on them. But this tie line is a piece of crap. This tie line is just tied in a knot and it's too short. It's not going to get around the cable. So we're going to get rid of that and we'll put a new one on. And it's on the wrong end. Normally you don't want to put your tie line on the plug end. You want to put it on the connector end. And that's because the connector end is going to be at your light fixture. And you're always going to have to coil the extra and tie it up at the light fixture. This is the plug end. And this is the connector end. This is the one that wants to have the tie line. You can put them on both ends if it's a big cable. And even if it's a small cable and you just want to be bundling it and tying it better. But minimum, put it on the connector end, not the plug in if you're only going to do one. Another piece of gaff tape here. Get rid of that. It's been on there a while. This is going to show up in all of my coiling cable videos and coiling hoses and coiling ropes, but you need to pick a direction. You need to pick an orientation and a direction. You've got four choices. You can hold the cable in your hand like this, or you can hold the cable in your hand like this or you can hold it in the right hand like that, or in the right hand like that. And every one of those four ways is going to require a slightly different technique, the same principles, but whether you're going one direction or the other. So I'm gonna do it this way because I'm most comfortable with it. And with all of the cable coiling techniques, we slide down and we extend our hand to the same point every time and that makes for consistency of our coil. If it's a smaller coil, I'll stop at a smaller point with the audio cables, but for the bigger ones, we'll go all the way down there. I'm going to go down all the way, and then I'm going to roll it in my fingers, anywhere from a half to a full turn, depending on how much it wants to do. And there I've got my big spool. Don't do it around the arm. Don't do it, don't do it. You get much more consistent coils here and you don't get that extra weird twists. And I coil and look at it, look, it goes to the same spot every time because I'm going down to the same length and I'm rolling it in my fingers. And if I need to make slight adjustment to make it consistent, I make a slight adjustment to make it consistent. And if I need to spin some of my cable, there we go. Extension cords, you probably don't want to do the over-under technique, so I'm just doing the forward technique here. And then rolling it in, and now I've got a nice, neat, bundled cord. And that's what we want. Let's try it a different way. I'm not very good at these other ways because I only do it the one way. So, with all of our cables, if we want to have a fighting chance, we need to get all the twists out. So I didn't do that at first time. You can start from either end. It doesn't really matter which end you start. And depending on how well it was coiled, it's going to behave differently. Okay, so now I've got this the other way. 
So now I got to think about this. I got to coil. I got to coil clockwise instead of counterclockwise because I've reversed my hand position here. So the other way I was twisting it in my hands counterclockwise. Now I've got to rotate my fingers clockwise on each turn. And that's a little bit harder for me because I don't do it that way. But this may be the most comfortable way for you. So do whichever way is most comfortable for you. And if you have to spin out some of those extra cur cur curls and twists, and if you have to also, if you have to do an extra twist, do an extra twist. This is harder for me. And then everything's going to be, again, reversed in the other hand, holding with my right hand and operating with my left. I'm not left-handed, so I can't demonstrate that very well, but uh, you'll figure that out. Same principles. One's going to be clockwise and one's going to be counterclockwise. Let's get a tie line on this. We have a couple boxes of cut tie line. We have one in the scene shop. We usually have one in the lighting shop too. And cut tie line is going to all be the right length. And it's longer than you think it is. I don't have an exact measurement on what it should be because I have a special technique for cutting tie line that I'll show you in a different video. And uh, this was the sh too short one that came off of the cable here and looks like it's got almost an extra foot on it. It looks like it's about three feet. I'm gonna show you a technique with how to cut your tie line. You don't have to measure things, you don't have to do anything. You just can cut a lot of repeated ones the same length. You just need to find your right template to work from and that'll make sense in that video. So what I like to do with my cable here is I like to do a clove hitch because that kind of prevents your average Joe stagehand from completely undoing it. If you don't know your clove hitch, look up how you do your clove hitch. I'm not going to go over that right now. Don't have it too close to the uh, end of the cable. You don't want it right at the plug. In case you have to do any maintenance in the plug, if it gets stuck there, then you just have to shift it along. I like to go in about six, eight inches from the, from the end. And tighten up that clove hitch. Now what I then do is I do two half hitches and that cinches it, the clove hitch cinches it on the cable so it can't slide around now and the two half hitches are safety so it doesn't come loose and it also prevents again your average Joe stagehand from trying to take it all off because now they have to undo three knots so they don't want to undo three knots. So once you've got it here Tie your bow tie. And it's done. Again, if you prefer to have one on each end to help make it tidy, you can do that. You can put another tie line on the other end. You can also plug your connectors in to each other. I don't normally do that because the chances of them coming out even and connecting is very rare. So if I do this and it's short, now it's got one loop that's short and that kind of bugs me personally more than the dangly ones. But if you want to plug them together, you can plug them together. It does help with preventing these loose ends from flopping all over the place, especially if you only have one tie line. This one's a little bit smaller than the other one. You're going to have a size that's uh, going to be determined by your storage container and by your shop lead. This is the one that I just did. This is the ones that are in the bin. The tighter the loop it goes, the thicker it becomes. And the red indicates that it's a 25 foot in our particular shop. Usually they're color coded to indicate length. Here's another 25 footer, uh, much too small for my taste. And here's a 50 footer. 50 footer is indicated by blue color coding in our shop. And the first thing we notice here 
is that our tie line is a little too close to the end, and this one's getting a little short for a 50 footer too, so I'm gonna take that one off. It is clove hitched, so it's not gonna move around, but it's in the way of the plug. It's going to be in the way of maintenance of the plug, and we don't want to have to do that if we're having to do any maintenance. If you want it to be closer because you don't like that flopping in, then do it more like three to six, three to four or five inches. Uh, so it's a little bit closer and put it a little bit closer right at the end of this marking. And then again, clove hitch is great, at least one half hitch just to discourage people from removing it, which you get with a lot of rookie brand new stagehands. They think they're supposed to take the whole tie line off until they learn that you're not supposed to. Again, it's nice to have it there at that end. If you want to, for the 50 footers and the 100 footers, we can put another one at the other end. Usually 50s and 100s are when it gets to make more sense to put two tie lines on. Doesn't really make sense usually for 10 footers, five footers, even 20, 25 footers. All right. The smaller my coil is, the thicker it's going to get. So I'm just going to start coiling and actually this is a little bit of a mess. I'm going to take all the kinks out. I'm not going to fight with it. So I'm going to run it through my fingers first because it's already coiled one direction and it's wanting to go one direction based upon the last person who coiled it. So I want to start from a fresh clean slate and here we go. That's my size. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not doing the over under. You can if you want. Usually the cable likes to not do the over under, likes to go one direction. Usually I just tend to give in to whatever the cable wants to do, do whatever it wants to go one way or the other, but cable generally prefers. Now you see with this two tie lines, I've got two tie lines pretty close to each other. So that's just because of the size of my coil and the fact that it's a 50 footer. It, it always works out best if you do have two tie lines that they end up on opposite sides. That will keep your cable, if one is co uh, tied here and one is tied over here, it'll keep your cable bundled nicely. Sometimes when you get them from the rental shop, they'll come with one attached to the cable and then they'll have a second one that's not attached just to help keep it all together while it transports from the rental house to the theater or the performance venue. Little bitty extension cords. This one's all kinds of kinked and twisted and knotted. They come out of the package that way because they come from the Home Depot or wherever you got them, they, they're folded in half like this and that puts a whole bunch of kinks in them. So it takes several uses to get those kinks out. I'm really pulling it hard through my fingers. This looks like it's a 14 or a 16 gauge cable. So that means it can't handle a full 20 amp load. 16 gauge, three by 16 AWG. I'm going to do it one more time, get some of those kinks out. There's other things you can do to help relax the cable too. Some people take a brand new cable and they tie it to a batten and they let them all just sort of hang for days and days or hours or whatever. And that helps take out some of those kinks. Some A little bit of heat will do that too. So if it's a warm theater, a warm space out in the sun, that will help. Same thing. Now, this is a shorter cable. I don't need to make it quite as big as I was doing. It's also going to go in one of these smaller bins over here. So I'm probably going to go about the size of an audio cable with this one. And it's not going to look pretty because it's got all those factory kinks in it. But over time and over practice, it's going to look better. And basically you just have to train the new cord to do what you want it to do. 
Don't be tempted to take that end and take this end and just do that in a knot. That's what you will be tempted to do when it doesn't have a tie line attached to it already. But that can move around and that's not really a good, strong, secure method. So we're going to take that out. Don't do that. Bring this back to here. Again, always putting it in the connector end, not the plug end. Yes, we're not gendering our cords and cables anymore. So plugs and connectors, plugs and connectors, not gendered names. All right, now I've got a tie line and bow tie. If you're doing something for lighting, come into the lighting shop and get an extension cord out of the lighting shop. You either get the orange ones or you'll get the black ones, depending on whether it's on stage and part of a show production. Usually the black ones are going to disappear in the, in the scenery and in the background. And the stage floor paint is black, the walls are black, the wings are black, everything is a dark color. So this disappears, this stands out. So black cords and orange cords, our lighting cords and they go in the uh, lighting shop. Often the black cords are going to be 12 gauge, although this one looks much thinner. I don't know if this one has any markings on it. It does. I'm gonna have to squint to read them. Three by 2.09 millimeters. Oh, 14 AWG. Never seen it expressed in millimeters before. 14 gauge. So that's not a full rated cord. And this one was 16 gauge. But that's what mostly is in these bins, 14 and 16 gauge cables. If you happen to see one that's pink or red or some other bright color, that's because those belong in the scene shop. They even have stickers that say they come in the scene shop. But everyone wants to grab an extension cord and they go into the scene shop and they grab the extension cords. We pretty much only have 25 foot extension cords in there and everything is 12 gauge and everything's uh, properly gauged to support all the power tools and they are these ugly bright colors that you would never want to use on stage backstage because they're going to show up in the background you're going to have to tape them up you're going to have to cover them up you're going to have to hide them so don't grab them come and grab the ones in the lighting room here that's what they're there for so come and grab an extension cord in the lighting room rather than coming and grabbing the extension cords out of the tool room the tool room extension cords are there for tool and set construction support. If you're taking a tool to a remote site, you're going to want to take some extension cords. If you're taking a, a miter saw or a, a portable air compressor or some other thing, you're going to want an extension cord. And sometimes in the scene shop, you need to run an extension cord to various points in the scene shop. So we need to have a supply of scene shop extension cords. This one's coiled a little bit small, so I'm going to start over and coil it afresh. Get some of these kinks out. This one's got some twists in it. Not going to want to behave but it's going over under, it seems, so I'm not gonna fight it. Scene shop extension cords. Here's a bright purple one. All right, one other thing about extension cords, especially the lightweight ones, you're going to be tempted to do something that you see on construction sites, but do not do this. It is real important that we have things in a nice coil. We often have to have cords lay flat, lay straight, go in a nice clean path. We don't want them all wobbly and wibbly and wobbly everywhere. So we want them to not have kinks and twists and knots and things like that. But there's this thing that people who work in construction sites do a lot of and uh, I'm just going to demonstrate it so you see what it's like, but don't do this. If you want to use it on your construction site, if you want to use it in your home, 
you're more than welcome to. So take your two ends, your plug and your connector, and you're gonna put them together. And then you're gonna feed both cables through your hands to the end. which gets you to the midpoint of the cable. Got a loop. What I'm gonna do is gonna take that loop and I'm gonna feed it through itself so that I have a loop. Now with that loop, I'm gonna stick my hand through and I'm going to pull another loop through. And now I've made a new loop. I'm gonna pull another loop through and another and another. and another, and another, all the way to the other end of the cable. I'm trying to make all my loops the same. They want to keep getting bigger as the weight of the cable. is coming, it's pulling down. Probably should have done this with a 16 gauge, something a little more lightweight than this 12 gauge cable. And then when you get to the final loop, you just feed your two ends through. This is what's called a daisy chain. And you often see this in someone who's carrying around their extension cords and they're throwing them in the back of a truck or into a toolbox and they just don't want them to get all tangled up and this actually helps contain them and control them better, as opposed to learning how to coil the theatrical way and doing things neat and tidy. This also puts a lot of kinks in your cable, so that's why we don't want to do it in theater. The nice thing about this is to undo it, you just take this first loop out, and then you'll see it just sort of unfolds itself all the way back down to that final loop. And if I had a wide view camera and attached the end somewhere, you'd see it goes, just pulls right out. But you get the principle. Except for that final loop, then we have to pull that out. If you wanna haul your own cables in the back of your truck or at your own home or in your own location, and you like this, go for it. Don't do it in any theater. Everyone will just go, no, stop ruining my cables. All right, back to our standard coil. And this one's pretty much been used in the scene shop, so it's behaving nicely. I'm doing a little un over under there. Starting to wanna do an over under, so I'm not gonna fight it. And You put these bright colored ones back in the scene shop, the pink and purple and red ones, and let the electrical ones be the orange and the black and some of the green ones and other, other colors. But uh, uh, audio also has some extension cords and some spider boxes. Those are all black. They want their cables and all their audio cables to be black as well to disappear on stage and not draw attention to themselves. So the orange ones are used for places that don't really matter if they're visible, but the black ones are for anything that's going to be partially visible by the audience or reflect light and cause the scene to be disrupted by the cable. All right.